The main reason I started this program, you know, I think it came out of being blessed to be um, interacting with so many people through um, doing public relations and journalism. And I thought that this would be a great way to give to others, to share some of the experiences that I've had after working with one athlete in particular, Cornelius Bennett, my first big celebrity client. Um, and I used to always ask them, well, what are you gonna do after you retire? After a while, I came up with this symposium called After the Party, What's the Plan? So after the party of playing football or singing um, and having platinum hits, what's the plan for the rest of your life? And met Mr. Dan Moore with the Apex Museum. He told me if I would come every Monday, between the hours of 10 and 12, he would assist me in my paperwork. In between that time, I had also met Ludacris um, lawyer and told him what I was doing. And he said, oh, I would love to do some work with you pro bono. So he took me on and he assigned one of his lawyers who was an African-American woman to me. And she created all the forms that I needed and filed us to become a corporation and um, Mr. Moore filed the forms for us to become the nonprofit piece. Um, I remember when I first joined, I knew that I wanted to write. I didn't know that I wanted to be an international food critic, but I love to write, I love food, and I loved music. I think it's wonderful for girls, our girls, to experience things outside of what they usually see. I know it doesn't seem like it now, but I was extremely shy. I can remember Miss Carla saying, oh no, we gotta get you out of that. She actually made me help her plan an event and host the entire thing by myself. Um, because of Miss Carla, I know how to get around Atlanta. Me and my sister were latchkey kids, so we locked the door and we were pretty much in for the weekend and wherever we needed to go, my mom would bring us and she would pick us up and Miss Carla quickly put a stop to that. She told us we needed to be more independent and taught us how to take Marta to get around Atlanta and to meet her to events and outings that we would go to. My daughter's progress has been phenomenal. I've actually watched her come out of her shell. She would usually rather read a book than uh, meet a new person or, or talk on the phone. Because of Carla's direct tutelage, she actually received a full ride to uh, Spelman College. So Carla was extremely inter, uh, instrumental in, in developing uh, her social skills and in helping her become the young woman that she is today. We have a program called Green Skin Girls where we teach young ladies how to care for their skin naturally in a green way. And we were having our Green Skin Girls at the spa at Ely Fresh doing an activity with them for Earth Day. Then the phone rang <laughs> and I remember Carla was on the phone and she said, listen, do y'all need carrots? <laughs> there are some carrots over at the park. They're giving away carrots. I thought of you all and you should go get the carrots. I thought that there were just gonna be just a bunch of carrots. And I know she said maybe a 50 pound bag, but I didn't really realize there were gonna be about 12 or so bags of carrots. And we started to give the carrots away to our clients. So not only did it nourish the skin, it also nourished them from within as well. And they were really grateful. And we had clients coming in asking, do you all still have carrots? So. When I think about a Dallas, um, which is I call her my little baby, she started um, going on our college tours when she was 11. We took a college trip. Um, that was really a good time. The girls were exposed to the thought of college, different universities, not even all HBCUs. Uh, so it was, it was the exposure that the girls got. Now she's a sophomore at Alabama A&M. There was an activity to get to know people in your community. Know your grocery store manager, know the you know, postal workers. And uh, my daughter was young and definitely afraid of public speaking. Um, but that was one of the very first activities that really brought her out. She wanted me to stand back and kind of support her while she go up to people. And I'm like, this is your baby. And from there, I really saw a tremendous amount of growth. A lot of it has to do with the fact that we found a great partnership. And she still, you know, talks to Miss Carla today. She'll call her about anything, references or, 
uh, scholarship internships, and I'm, I'm very, very, very proud of their relationship. You're not in the school, but you can offer something, and it's in addition to. Now they focus more on standardized tests. They focus on so many other things, and they're not really building the social, emotional child. When you're truly passionate about something that you live it, you breathe it, it exudes through your pores. And she is Sisters of Today and Tomorrow. There's there's really no <laughs> difference in the two. You know, I, when I see her, I see the organization. Not even just that, but also to give them the exposure so that they can dream because that's what it's about. You have to provide that exposure. You have to nourish. There's a whole environment that you have to create for the youth and Sisters of Today and Tomorrow does that. That's why this program is necessary.